Hello, my friends. Join me again on a trip from Sanford, North Carolina to Siler City. Well, we'll have about 25, 30 minutes, I think, to talk about something really, let's just call it near and dear. This is going to be a really different video. If you're used to videos that I make about things like technology, this ain't it. This is not a tech video. This is not really even a political video or a video about electronics or anything like that. It's not even a video about video games or Pokemon cards or some other nerd culture thing, but it is a video about something that affects quite a few people that are like me. <sighs> Women, but specifically this one woman that greatly altered the course of my life for the worse. That woman is my ex-wife. Yeah, we're digging deep into the poop on this one. One woman single-handedly managed to manipulate everyone around me, and me as well, throughout my 20s in such a way that I was unable to even potentially, like there was basically no chance that I could meet someone else that wasn't her. And through doing this, she managed to make sure that she was the only option. She latched on and did not let go. She had mental problems, but those mental problems were not obvious because the way that she behaved made her a social butterfly. Uh, she's very good at getting people to basically agree with her, um, to like her, and I, I, I say this in the present tense, but the truth is that I haven't spent any notable amount of time in her presence in years, but um, I speak about it as the pr uh, in the present tense because that's kind of how my memories of it are playing out. So what I went through, well, let me rewind it back to the beginning. There was a time in my life, which is difficult to believe if you're looking at my face right now. Oh, you're not because it's bright. When I was 18, 18 years old, a very important thing you need to understand about me is that I am autistic. Oh, I am God! Get the fuck out of God's way! <laughs> God loves you, child. God makes love to you in the anus, child. Here, in the anus! The anus! Specifically, I am high-functioning autistic. I am what used to be called Asperger syndrome autistic until they decided that it was just autistic and that it was a spectrum and that there's not really going to be any way for us to uh, indicate that, well, you're just a little bit socially messed up and don't understand some things the way that other people do, uh, but you're not dysfunctional to the point that you grunt and scream and get upset and can't communicate. Now, autism really is a, a very broad series of things, and I am at the high end of it to the point that I was actually part of a program that researched autism in the 90s, and their initial assessments of me um, I basically won the autism trophy by being borderline. We're talking like, you know, one factor or question or whatever on the side of being autistic. So I'm not autistic like some people. <laughs> some people are very autistic. I am mildly autistic. But it doesn't mean that I'm somehow a social butterfly myself or that I'm incredibly socially capable. Unfortunately, one of the things that I have had to adapt to in the most harsh ways imaginable is other people. The way that other people behave, what other people do, how other people will try to screw you over in the most creative and diverse set of ways that you can ever imagine. It's astonishing how many ways one person can screw over another person. And I do believe that I've brushed with, uh, brushed up against quite a few of these possible ways. And a lot of them 
were with my ex-wife. I was 18. I was doing what people in the early 2000s did um, when they wanted to meet women but didn't know anything about being social and, uh, you know, posting things on the internet, um, talking through instant messengers and chat rooms, and that kind of, sort of, doesn't have anything to do with this, but it kind of does. I went to high school with a girl who, I'm just going to leave her name out of it. I know she doesn't want to be involved in it. Um, and this girl had a cousin who lived nearby but didn't go to my school, and I was interested in the girl, but the girl introduced me to her cousin, and her cousin decided that she liked me immediately, and the, and it just progressed from there, basically. I didn't know anything about things like love bombing. Uh, I didn't know, really, I didn't know anything about how women who are not right in the head or who are just manipulative can manipulate people. I always kind of assumed that people ha generally had good intentions. I had this, this pesky, youthful faith in the goodness of humanity as a whole. And she didn't, she wasn't mean at all. Therefore, I assumed that talking to her, that she was probably okay. And I don't really want to get into the thick of the history. But the bottom line is that everything started with just me meeting and this person deciding to latch on to me. When I say latch on, as if she's some sort of leech or parasite, I am not exaggerating. Um, I am using a metaphor, but I am not exaggerating in just how latchy this latching was. I only discovered the depth of it. I only truly found out just how far it went. I think a decade after I dispensed of her, not maybe not a decade, maybe maybe it was half a decade, but it took years after I broke off the relationship and watched her smash every photo frame in the house, scream, ugly cry, and yell and be verbally abusive and so on. It, it took years for me to even find out what really went on and why things happened the way they did. I want to be clear. I was, this woman came into my life roughly, um, I don't want to give specific years. I don't want to reveal too much personal information. But she came into my life roughly eight years before I would eventually tell her, it's over. No, there's no counseling. It's over. No, I've made a decision. You need to leave. And take the creaky, dirty, stupid bed with you. I'll sleep on the floor if I have to. <clears throat> I did, in fact, sleep on an air mattress when she left and took the mattress with her. I didn't like the mattress anyway. But we're talking about an eight-year span of my life. We're talking about um, most... All of my early and mid-twenties, really, um, were burned by this woman. So, what happened? How, how did this all end up going? Well, what was going on, and I don't want to bury the lead on this, so I'll just say it outright. What was going on behind the scenes is this woman would go to other women she would inject herself into anything in my life that represented a potential avenue to meet other women that weren't her, to meet other people that behaved differently from her, because it turns out the way that she maintained her control was to isolate. But she didn't isolate in that classical, like, movie villain or psycho Reddit story way. Oh no. Oh no. Dear viewer, this woman did not isolate in that way at all. By isolate, I don't mean that she chased everyone off. By isolate, I mean that she lied to everyone or told truths that were uncomfortable or mean or whatever, revealed secrets that were given to her in trust, uh, whatever she had to do to 
distance a person from me enough that their influence, depending on how much of a threat their influence represented um, to her control and, shall we even say, ownership of me, um, she would do or say whatever had to be done or said to make sure that the person was distanced enough to not represent a significant threat to her control and ownership of me. And that's all there is to that. There's, there's so much to it though, and I want to make sure that I drive the message, the point of this home right now. If someone is telling you that they're interested in someone, or if someone's telling you just randomly, like out of, uh, out of nowhere, telling you things that are less than savory about someone, or if they're telling you some in, in, anything, if someone tells you something or says something to you that seems to be meant to distance you from the other person, be it the, if they say that they're not really a good person or um, they, they don't wash their underwear or these are all hypotheticals. I don't know exactly what she said to these people, but if they're revealing or saying things to you about someone that seem to exist to drive a wedge between you and the person they're talking about. If it, it may just seem like gossip, it may not. But you owe it to yourself or to the person that you're being told about to at least make it clear that the other person is telling you that. Now, there is a catch-22 here. You obviously, if you have some real psycho. Um, and people just don't know, like her, uh, and the game is given up, then they might go psycho. They might, you know, if you say, hey, hey, I want you to know that, you know, Loquisha or whatever the, the, uh, the, this girl's name is, um, told me about you um, not washing your underwear. Well, you know, that... If, if it's supposed to be something where it's like, hey, I just want to warn you that this person might not be good. Well, think of the context. Why did you need to know that? Why did you need to know that this person, oh, may not, may not be as great as you think they are? And I, here's the specific thing that I'm trying to get at with this. I'm, I'm making up hypotheticals, but there's one specific thing that I was told by one person. And all of this knowledge comes from one person. And I don't even remember which person that is, but that person is a goddamn legend. They told me that my ex-wife, when we were together, had told them that she was interested in me and that she would like for them to not pursue me or show interest in me, basically just to, you know, stay backed off, don't, don't show any interest in him, whatever, because I was hers, because she was interested. And, you know, you know, some girl tells some other girl, I'm interested in him, so keep your hands off him. Well, nobody talked to me about that. And I would really have appreciated it if I, if all the other people that she probably did that with, that she probably said something like that to, I would have been massively appreciative if somebody, at some point over those eight years of my life, gave up the game to me, <clears throat> opened that curtain and showed me the wizard. But, and it, it, I know, I know, I, I don't have anybody that said it, but once I was told that, all of a sudden, so much made sense. This woman insisted if I went, um, if I worked somewhere, like I, for years and years, I actually worked for various pizza huts delivering pizzas in, in my younger years. She would basically, she had, oh, she had to get a job at Pizza Hut. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. We can, you know, work together, whatever. Well, what she did at Pizza Hut was tell all the girls that were probably a lot kinder hearted and definitely a lot cuter and uh, probably would have been a lot less abusive than her um, to back off. She made damn sure that nobody was interested in me. 
And then when I changed Pizza Hut's, well, guess what? She did whatever she had to do to try to change to the one that I was at. I worked at four different stores and I wasn't running from her. I had disagreements with management. If you've ever worked in you know, restaurants, fast food, <clears throat> this is back when Pizza Hut's actually had like bars. But if you've ever worked in the food business, in the restaurant business, you know there's high turnover for a reason, there's a lot of really crappy managers, and there's really not much that, um, there's not much that you can do about any of this. So, yeah, it was crappy. Let me turn this up a bit. Yeah. Um, but I was bouncing around because of poor management, and I actually quit for the final time because of the poor manager assigning me six days of work when I was down to two because my computer business was doing so well. But here's another thing, okay? Pizza Hut, right? So she goes systematically, follows me, like even if she just is, like finds a way to be like, I just want to come and help out because they were all under the same umbrella company so you can actually bounce between them um, and technically you weren't working for a different company. There were several locations. So she would bounce between them even if it was just to help out or whatever to make sure that there were no women there that would be interested in me and that I might you know, get to know and discover, oh, they're better than her. They're not abusive. They're, they're not, you know, whatever. She made damn sure that she cut off anything like that. Well, here's, here's another problem. I started building my computer business as a side thing that I did, mostly advertising on Craigslist. Well, you know, obviously couples talk about what they do and in retrospect, I realize it's, it's actually, first of all, it was unprofessional of me to, to consent to it, but I was a pushover because I was an autistic, you know, early 20-something or whatever, and, I, you know, I just, I felt, I, I, was, I was a fucking doormat. What else am I supposed to say? You know, I don't, I don't pretend that I'm proud of the, the way that I was able to be shoved around back then, but I had customers that were female, mostly wives, but I had female customers, I would go to their homes and I would do work for them. And she would insist on coming with me on some of these jobs. Now, today, if my current beau were to ask if she could come along on some of my jobs, I would default to no and I would probably continue to say no unless she had a damn good reason for it. There, there would have to be a sensible explanation. It, it wouldn't just be, oh yeah, you're, you know, I'm with you and you're asking and I'm afraid to say no to people, so yeah, sure, why not? But she would go to these jobs with me and as I think about it now, I realize these were the jobs where I was doing services for females. Um, she'd make damn sure that none of my female customers who, by the way, most of them were happily married or maybe not happily married, I don't know for sure, but it was business. It was not personal and no, I wasn't even trying to date, but she'd come along anyway and I assume made sure that no interest cropped up, you know, assess the threat and shut it down. Highly inappropriate. Absolutely awful, stupid of me to have ever allowed her to do that. But that's what she did. So let's review. She made sure that nobody I worked with, no, no women I worked with, it's women in particular, but she, she clearly did some of this with men too, not for romantic reasons, but just so that I wouldn't make friends that she didn't control. All of my friends that I had around me were people that she brought into the fold and that she controlled. Some of them I was actually interested in, sexually interested in, you know, wanted to date. Um, and gee, that never happened. I wonder why that never happened. I wonder why the friends that I showed some degree of interest in, because keep in mind, there was no official boyfriend, girlfriend declaration or any of that shit. She mainly just shoehorned her way in with a crotch and didn't go away. And we ended up, I mean, she ended up living with me at my mom's. I mean, they, she really nested right in there and made damn sure that nobody else could get their way in. And it's funny how the, the women that I 
showed some interest in, all of a sudden I never heard from them again. All of a sudden, they, they, no mention of them. Just like, oh, yeah, whatever happened with her? It's like, oh, no, she doesn't know whatever, blah, 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 blah. But they never surfaced again. She pissed all over anyone that would get remotely close to her territory. And her territory was me. And she did not treat me well. There was one incident that comes to mind where um, she actually, you know, we, we, would, we yelled at each other all the time throughout most of the fucking relationship. It was really quite toxic and cancerous. Um, we, made each, we made each other the worst version of each other we could be. And it was, um, there was a point where she actually punched me like in the chest, like, like up here or whatever. Now, I took several years of martial arts training when I was in high school, and I punched her back, but if you do martial arts, you know you can punch and not, um, you can hit, but not actually impact. Like, you can choose how hard you hit. You punch and you pull back like you would when you're sparring, or you punch and you punch through to maximize damage. And I punched and pulled back like sparring so that she got hit, and it was a hit to her pride, but didn't really hurt. Um, and I started yelling at her back, saying, you want to fight me like a man? Well, do it, and I'm going to fight you like a man. And I waited, and I waited. You know, she kept screaming, but she never hit me again. Never hit me again, not once. There was no more violence in that relationship. I cut that shit off. That was basically where that nonsense ended because when it starts to escalate to that point it kind of snaps you out of it and you realize you know what you know I've been putting my head down I've been trying to maintain this sort of you know cordial you know I've been trying to keep things you know I, I've, I've basically been sacrificing my own self and my sensibilities to make things smoother to, to keep the peace and maybe the, maybe this isn't the best idea. So I open a brick and mortar store in Siler City. I, I move there, which is actually where she's from. And I don't want to get into her family. That's a whole other can of worms. But the bottom line, I move there. Set up a shop. Start doing computer repairs professionally in that shop. And guess what? You know, we're a couple. So... Of course, she's going to move in, move with me, and she's going to help me out, help me get started. And then, you know, as we're getting things started, um, I bring on a guy that I went to high school with to do some work with me, um, basically my first employee, if you want to call him that. Um, at that point, we didn't have a notion of employees. I just threw him some money for helping. But, you know, eventually she drifted away from my front because it was, I mean, let's be honest, it's boring as shit to be someone who doesn't do computers, just sitting at the front of the place with almost nobody actually coming in. You know, computer stores are pretty low traffic. You don't usually have four or five people coming in an hour, and you might have one an hour at the most in a place like where I am. And so it's boring. So she, we're next door to Domino's Pizza at the time, and guess what? She gets a job there, and she works there. And she works there throughout the remainder of our relationship because that's where she was working when I told her, we're getting divorced, there's nothing you can do about it, you are, you are gone. I've made my decision and that's it. I shouldn't have gotten married, but the thing is, I got married for the same reason that I, uh, that I let her go on jobs with me, that um, I didn't think about it being weird, you know, or, or that I didn't question her, you know, the, the friendship she brought into the fold or whatever because I was a, I was a pushover. I was, you know, I didn't understand social things. I was a pushover. Um, I was young. I didn't under, I, I just didn't know what the hell to do. And she kept asking, when are you going to marry me? When are you going to marry me? When are you going to marry me? And what do you do when you're a man and a woman won't stop nagging you to do something? At some point, you either tell her to fuck off or you do the thing. 
Well, marriage is just a piece of paper, right? So yeah, we do the whole, uh, what do you call it, the magistrate thing, sign a piece of paper, take a picture. There's no wedding or anything. It's just a piece of paper. Ooh, I'm married now. I'm a wife. Whatever, you know. But marriage is a contract with the state. The only good thing about this whole thing is that at the end of it, she, um, she was not... Um, I mean, there wasn't really anything in it for her to come after me and like be like, oh, I want like alimony or some shit. You know, we both worked jobs. We both owned our own cars. Um, we both had all of the functionings of separate lives. There was not really any property of mine that I that she wanted that I hadn't just given to her so she'd go away. So she just signed the divorce paper saying we have both already dealt with everything and there are no kids. And that was the end of it. But... You, you know, that, that's the only thing that I lucked out on in that regard. I spent eight years of my life with a woman latched on to me, circling around me and keeping other women away from me, um, basically controlling all of my relationships, um, you know, looking over my shoulder at my instant messages, just all this shit. And all of it, all of that behavior was abuse. It was psychological abuse. There was that one little incident of um, physical abuse, and I didn't really get hurt. I mean, it's not like she cracked a rib or left a big bruise or anything. It didn't feel good to get punched, but yeah, you know, it could have been worse. But the bottom line is all this abuse was going on, and, and it's, not, it's not even the yelling at me or the bullying me into doing things that was the worst part. It was finding out so much later that all of my potential relationships that my, I, I think she told some of my female customers things because it was funny how after she came with me, and it's possible that it's just because she came with me, some of them she came with me multiple times to see, so they got to know her too. Funny how every single one of those I can think of that she went to more than once, uh, went, went with me to more than once, I never heard from them again after about the second time. I'm thinking she said some shit to them um, to get them to disengage from me. So not only, and this is pure speculation, I understand, but based on what I know, it would make sense. So she probably not only prevented me from being able to find someone better than her, which is what I deserved, even though I was kind of an asshole, um, I still deserved better than what she was doing, giving me and uh, preventing me from finding alternatives to. But she also, most likely, lost me business, directly caused me financial and professional reputational harm, just so that she could make sure that I wasn't going to potentially bone some customer, or some customer's, like, I don't know, like, hot sister or some shit. You know, it's really nutty. So this is the, the whole point of this video, the whole point of this ramble is if somebody is contributing information to you that's negative about someone, you really need to think it through before you just trust it. But more than that, maybe you should say something. Strongly consider, should I say something to the person? Because had one of the women who were told, like one of the women I worked with or whatever, that were told um, that I was basically, you know, oh, I'm interested in him, um, he's mine, hands off. Had one of them come to me and said, hey, she came to me and said this, it would have broken the spell, maybe not completely, maybe not even for the most part, but it would have put a big crack in that facade, and I might not have spent, you know, I could have been spared five, six, seven years, most of my 20s. Some people consider your 20s to be some of the, the most interesting parts of your life because now you have all the wonder of childhood and teenage years, but you now also have the freedom of becoming a budding adult. And just, it, I, I could have been spared all of that shit, all of the abuse, all of the manipulation, all of the yelling, having all of the pictures in the house smashed. I, I could have been spared so much had one person opened their silly little mouths. But no, it's amazing how 
A whole sea of people can be told one-on-one -on -one by a manipulative bitch that, hey, that guy's mine. Um, don't show any interest in him. Don't, don't do anything. Just, you know, stay away from him. And all of these people kept quiet. All these people around me kept quiet. And to say that I am angry about this situation would be a gross understatement. Um, I, a good chunk of my life was stolen by one person. We have both moved on. She remarried, and I don't know what weird other shit she's done since, but the bottom line is she's not in my life. She's not controlling my, li my life. Um, Oh, hell, I just remembered there was this one time I had a girlfriend um, after her, and I invited her over, and um, and she tried to just tell the girl that I was with that that um, at the dinner table that I was like all kinds of like... She started talking shit about me at my dinner table with my girlfriend at the time, who didn't believe her because I had warned her in advance about how vindictive she was and manipulative and all that, but just the brass balls required to, to do something like that, the disrespect of doing something like that, there is no redemption or forgiveness for, at least on a personal level, for anything like that. You know, talk to whatever God you want to. But in my eyes, you do something like that to me, you can burn. You can be on fire, and I will, and I will hold it in until I am about to pee my pants. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop talking about it now. It's, it's actually really, really obnoxious to, uh, to even just think about it. Is awful. I, I hate it. Um, it was, it was, it was terrible. The only good thing I can say is that I never stuck with anybody that was like, I never got with anybody like that and, and definitely watched out for the signs and made sure I didn't get hitched to anybody like that ever again. But that's really the only good thing that I can say came out of it is that I avoided any possibility of, um, getting hitched to a psycho again. <sighs> All right. I'm, I'm stopping. I'm stopping. I can't deal with it anymore. It's just so stupid. But I, I wanted all of you to really put some serious thought into this, into, you know, do you know someone? Do you know somebody in your life that has, you know, that maybe you avoided because someone else came up and just talked some shit about them? Has there ever been something like that? Has there been... Have you ever gone through what I've gone through? I mean, obviously not the same thing necessarily, but have you ever had a partner or other trusted person, a family member, somebody close to you that latched on, so to speak, that would not allow you to do things without them, that manipulated the people around you to maintain control over you? I know I'm not remotely unique in that regard. And if you've got such a story, Hey, man, feel free to tell it in the comments. Anyway, got to go. Thanks for listening. You know, the whole like, comment, subscribe crap. Take it easy.